Hi everyone! I am finally filming a new video and I am so excited. Yesterday I created a poll and I asked you which topic would you like to see in my next video and the majority of you voted for static versus dynamic binding in C++. So that is what I'm going to cover in this video and I also plan to make more of these votings in the future so if you want to participate in the decision making you can vote here or on my Instagram account as well. I take in consideration both and I am going to link my Instagram in the description of this video. So the topic of static versus dynamic binding in C++ is actually very easy to understand if you already understand some of the topics that we covered in my previous videos and I am going to link all of those videos in the description and I will link them in the exact order they need to be watched so that it is easier for you to learn and so that you can get that knowledge step by step. So if at any point during this video you feel like you don't understand something or you feel like you have a knowledge gap, make sure to visit the description and there you will find all the help and all the details that you need. So let's return to explaining differences between static and dynamic binding in C++. And the first thing that I want to explain is what is binding. So in order to understand this, you need to be familiar with functions in C++. And in case that you are not, or if you need a little reminder, I'm going to link a playlist here. So what is binding? In C++, binding means associating the call of a function with the definition of that function. Now, in C++ we have two different types of binding, static binding and dynamic binding. In static binding, all of the information necessary in order to perform that association is available at compile time, so that association is happening at compile time. And another name for static binding in C++ is also compile time binding or early binding. Now, on the other hand, dynamic binding is performed during runtime because all of the information necessary to perform that binding is not available at compile time, but it is available at runtime. So another name for dynamic binding is late binding or runtime binding. Now, if you're wondering about which one is better, the answer is that both have some advantages and disadvantages. In static binding, as I already said, the process of associating the call of a function with its definition is happening during the compile time, which means that it is not happening during the runtime, which furthermore will make our program run faster. On the other hand, in dynamic binding, that process of association is happening during the runtime, which will make our program a little bit slower. So now your question might be, Saldina, why don't we always use static binding then? Well, the answer is because dynamic binding also has its own advantages. And the main advantage of dynamic binding is it is very flexible and it allows us to decide which function definition we want to invoke at runtime. So we make that decision at runtime based on the data. And I am going to show you how that works on the example later in this video. So how can we achieve static binding and dynamic binding? You need to know that static binding happens by default. So by using a normal function call or by using function overloading or operator overloading, that is how we achieve static binding. On the other hand, dynamic binding happens when we use virtual functions or function overriding. Now, please don't confuse these two. Please don't confuse function overloading and function overriding. Function overloading is used with static binding and function overloading means creating multiple functions that have the same name but they have different parameters. That is function overloading. On the other hand, function overriding is used with dynamic binding and it is achieved when we create inside child class a newer version of a function that already exists inside parent class. Now, if you are confused about any of these things that I mentioned, you can find all of these topics covered in individual videos, which I will link in the description. And now I'm going to show you how we can achieve static and dynamic binding in code. 
So the first one that I want to demonstrate is static binding. And as I already said, it is achieved by normal function calls or by using function overloading or operator overloading. So let's create two functions called some numbers and the first function will receive two numbers and then the second function will receive three numbers and let's explain then how static binding works so let's create a function that returns float let's call it some numbers okay and it will receive two float parameters so number a and number b and the job of this function will be to return the result of a plus b. Okay, so that is the first function. And the second function will be very similar. But instead of receiving two parameters, it will receive three parameters. So I will say float a, float b, and then float c. And its job will be to return the result of a plus b plus c, like this. So what I want to do now is I want to invoke these two functions. So I will say C out some numbers and I will pass number one and number two at end line. And then in the second line, again, I will invoke some numbers, but this time I will pass three parameters like this. So if I run my program now, you will probably guess correctly what is going to happen. Okay, so for this first some numbers function, we get the result of three. And then for this second, we get the result of six. So let's close this program and let's explain what is happening here. So even though this function here and this function here have the same name, it is still possible to decide at compile time which one of the two will be invoked at this line here and then which one will be invoked at this line here. So how can we decide that at compile time? The answer is by looking at the parameters of these two functions. So the first one receives two parameters and the second one receives three parameters. So when we try to invoke some numbers and we pass two parameters, at compile time, we are already associating this function call here with this definition here. And then in this second line, when we try to invoke a function that is also called some numbers, but this time we pass three numbers, so three parameters, we are again at compile time associating this function call with this function definition. And as I already said, all of that is happening at compile time because all of the information is already available at compile time. So that is how we achieve static binding in C++. So let's delete all of this code. I don't need it anymore because I want to explain how dynamic binding works in C++. And in order to understand dynamic binding, you need to be familiar with inheritance in C++ and with virtual functions. And I will link those videos in the description. So what I want to do is I want to create two classes. The first one, which will be base class, is called user. And then the second one, which will be child class or derived class, is called super user. So let's do that. I will say class user. Okay. And then, as I said, the second class will be super user. Like this. Okay, and this super user will be a child class of user class that we created here. So I will say that it inherits publicly from user class like this. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to create a method inside this user class and then I will create a method with the same name and same parameters inside this super user class. So I will say public because all of the members of a class are private by default and unless we say public explicitly, those members will not be available outside of that class. That is why I'm putting this access modifier. So let's create a method called get permissions. I will say void get permissions like this and it will not receive any parameters. And inside this method, I will just say C out users can see limited info. 
like this. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to create this method inside my super user class, but here I will say that super users can see all the info. So we have the same method here and here, and both of these methods have the same parameter list, which is zero parameters, but they have different implementation. This one says user can see limited info, and then this one says super users can see all of the info. Now, in order to achieve dynamic binding, we are missing one more thing, and that is virtual keyword here. So here I will say virtual, like this. And again, if you're not familiar with virtual functions, check out that video in the description. Okay, now what I want to do inside my main function is I want to create a user and a super user. So I will say user and I will call it you. So we created a user and let's now create a super user as well. So I will say super user and let's call it S. Okay. What I want to do with these two is I want to create a list of pointers of type user and inside that list I will push both this user and this super user and that will be possible because super user deep down is still user because it inherits from user class. So let's create that list. Let's say list of user pointers like this. And in order to be able to use list collection, you need to include it here. You need to say include list like this. And as you can see, now the error has disappeared. So I am creating a list of user pointers and I will call it users like this. And as I already said, inside this users list, I will push both the address of this user and this super user. So I will say users dot push back. And here I will put the address of my user. And then I will do the same for my super user. And a quick tip, if you are wondering why I'm using this ampersand symbol here, it is because I want to add the address of my user to this list here and then the address of a super user to this list here. So why am I doing that? Well, because this here is a list of user pointers, which means that here we need to add addresses. And if I try to remove this ampersand symbol from here or from here, as you can see, we will get errors because as I already said, this here is a list of user pointers. So here we need to add addresses. So I will return this ampersand symbol and then here as well. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to iterate through the list of my users and for each user inside that list, whether it is user or super user, I will invoke a function called get permissions and it should dynamically bind appropriate function with that call. So for super user, this function here should be invoked and then for user, this function here should be invoked. So let's demonstrate how that works. I will create for each loop here. So I will say for, so for every user pointer, which I will call user PTR inside my users list, what I want to do is I want to say user pointer, please invoke function called get permissions. And keep in mind that here I need to use this symbol instead of dot because this here is a pointer. So let's return that symbol. Okay, so if I run my program, let's see what is going to happen. Okay, and as you can see, it says users can see limited information and then super users can see all of the information. So for our user, we invoke this implementation here. And then for super user, we invoke this implementation here. And that decision is made at runtime because it is based on the value that we will find inside this variable here. And that value, that data is not available at compile time, but that data can only be available at runtime. So that is how we achieve dynamic binding in C++. 
So I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and also comment about the topics that you would like to see in the future. And I am going to create more polls where we will decide together about the topics for my next videos and you can vote both here on YouTube and on my Instagram account as well. But if you want to increase the chances of your topic appearing in the next video, make sure to vote both on Instagram and on YouTube. So I believe that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you in some other video. Bye!